Now, as more and more and more of you are starting to do like healing brush and clone stamp tools and stuff like that, something um, <clears throat> has, has been showing up that I'm seeing a lot of people deal with, a problem that I'm seeing a lot of people deal with, uh, and that is um, when you're going up against the edge of the skin, let, let me just do it really quickly. So I'm just going to make a new layer here. I already clone stamped this, but we'll, we'll just uh, turn that off. Um, once <clears throat> I'm trying to clone stamp tool in here, and get rid of this blue, right? But it starts to get, if you use a hard edge brush, okay, it starts to get rather blotchy. Um, you know, and you can kind of see the edges and stuff like that where, um, you know, where the uh, clone stamp ends and the old tones begin and that sort of stuff. The solution to that, obviously, is to use a brush with a softer edge and then also you can take the opacity back down. The problem with this is, see that starts to look a lot smoother. There's two problems that come up with this, um, and we'll deal with one in this demo, and then I'm going to do another demo for you immediately after that we'll have the second problem. But the, the big issue is once you start getting close to like see her, her face there, um, notice that if I don't go, if I go right up against her chin, okay, you still see this edge of blue. No matter how good I am, I'm going to have an edge of blue. If I go right up against the edge of her chin, then you're going to get, you know, uh, that red's going to then go in and invade the, the skin on her face, right? And so you'll never get that good edge. However, then the problem is, okay, so the solution is I need to go to a harder edge brush. So I use a harder edge brush, but now my clone stamp gets all blotchy again, you see? So I kind of get stuck between... Um, you know, uh, trying to use the soft edge brush versus a hard edge brush, trying to get a good edge along the side of her face uh, versus leaving some of the background, which is obviously not an option either, because if you do that, you might as well just not have clone stamps the background, okay? So, what do you do? It's actually really simple. All you do, let me duplicate the one that I already did here, probably the easiest way to show it to you. All you do is you take that layer that you're clone stamping and you add a, um, let's see if I can right click, duplicate, you add a uh, layer mask. So let me delete the layer mask and show you what I really did. So when I was clone stamping, I actually went way over her face, okay? You can see the difference there, okay? I went way into her chin and underneath the jaw and in the neckline. And then what I did is I added a layer mask and then using the brush tools, I kind of went back in with the brush tools to create a really good edge. So let me just show you how I did that. So um, we'll just pretend like the other one doesn't exist. I've cloned, I've done my cloning and I've got this and it all looks pretty good, but obviously it's a mess around her chin. I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to create a new layer mask. And once I do that, I'm just going to get my brush with the black and I'm going to go in here and I can start working right around the edge of her chin. Now probably what's going to happen is I'm going to end up going a little too far. But the, the beauty of the layer masks that I've been showing you recently is that you can do that and you don't mess up. So if I go too far here like that, okay, um, now I can just grab the white paint or the eraser, doesn't matter, either one will work. Um, <clears throat> and I can go in, oopsies, I am on the eraser. Oh, because it flip-flopped the colors. <laughs> and I can use the eraser, and I can get a good edge, or I can use the brush tool and just flip-flop the colors and just paint white back in. Now, it's going to be a little easier to create a nice edge down here along her chin than it would be, say, up here along her nose. And the reason for that is the chin area is a little softer. So one of the other things that's rather important about this is when you're using a layer mask, you want to evaluate the area that you're trying to edit. Is it sharp or is it softer? So here in this photograph, you can see when I focused, I was A, using a very, very wide aperture. I think if I remember shooting in there, the light was relatively limited. I was using a wide aperture on purpose. I was trying to throw my background out of focus. So I think I was using uh, 2.8. 
uh, which is a pretty wide aperture, and I was probably using it, I was at 70 millimeters with this, it's a little bit of a telephoto, so my depth of field's gonna be shallow. And then when she leaned her head, which was great for the profiles that I was shooting, but then she leaned her head in a little bit to look at something, and you can see how her eyes in focus, so I, at least I focused on the right thing. You can see the left eye is in focus, the right eye is not. The, the nose is pretty much in focus, it gets a little bit out of focus, but then by the time you go down to her lips and her chin, they're, they're starting to get soft, okay? That's a pretty shallow depth of field. It doesn't, I don't think it's a negative in this photograph, I think it's rather nice, but when I'm doing my, um, uh, my layer mask, okay, I can take a look at this and I can be very specific and say, you know what? Um, <clears throat> I, I, I want to use a, a brush with a slightly softer edge, you know, maybe 30% hardness on the, on the brush here. Um, oopsies, I'm, going to, I'm using white instead of black. So that as I go along here, the edge that I'm creating has a slight blur to it. If it, had a perf if it was perfectly sharp, I think it would actually look bad because this, this edge along her chin is actually a softer edge. Does that make sense? So you want to judge that and you want to gauge how soft the edge needs to be based upon the softness or the sharpness of the, that area of the photograph. And it'll change. So here in the chin, I would use one brush. As I moved up to the nose, I would start reducing the softness, or I should say increasing the sharpness of the brushes for the mask if I needed to. Now, in this case, I didn't do any cloning up here by the nose because all I was really worried about was that bright splotch down there, and so it doesn't really matter, okay? But you might come into a photograph where you're working on one, and you have to adjust your masking technique to match the sharpness of the area of the photograph you're working around. Does, does that make sense? So this is a really nice technique. This will save you time, because you don't have to try and get along that edge. You just clone like crazy, get it looking nice and smooth, get your tones looking really good, and if you go over top of an area of interest, like the chin or, or something like that, that's fine, you then use a layer mask to back out, basically, is what you do. It's also nice because you can constantly go back and forth, too. Because you've got the layer mask and the way the layer mask works, three days from now you can decide, you know what, I didn't do a great job of that, I need to redo it, and you can. Whereas if you're trying to create the edge just with the clone stamp tool and just very carefully go alongside her face, if you don't do a good job of it, three days later you may decide that, but you may be in for a lot more work because you have to redo part of what you've already done. Does, does that make sense? So this is a real nice time-saving technique, just doing a clone stamp tool like crazy. This works for the healing brush tool. It works for everything, okay? So you can, you can do that. One thing I do suggest is, isolate things on separate layers so that you have a real good sense of, um, well, so that it's easy for you to adjust things and possibly trash things without having to lose all of your work. So if I did clone stamp around the chin, and then let's say I had to do a lot of cloning um, you know, up here somewhere, I don't know why, but let's just say I did, I would put those on separate layers so that I could control them separately. That way if I mess one up, I don't have to redo both. Does that make sense too? Okay, so, any questions about this technique? No? Good. 